Greetings and welcome to our seventh episode of R. Kelly Appeal TV, where we discuss pertinent conversations, information, and provide updates on the appeal process of Robert Sylvester Kelly's appeal. I am thankful for all the individuals who have viewed our podcast and who have shared in 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 email conversations, phone conversations. I'm so grateful because what you're doing is helping me narrow down, you know, the voices and views of other people in how this situation with R. Kelly has affected America, has affected, you know, you know, the world globally, even in a pandemic. Um, that's, that's very important as well, because that will be the, um, perspectives that we will use this time frame for. So I'm also thankful for all the individuals making a stand and stepping out against sex trafficking, which is an illegal giant money-making industry. This is also happening during a time of, you know, um, a pandemic as well. So in this episode, episode seven, I would like to share with you first and foremost, to start off the conversation, I had an angry individual last week, um, text me online. And basically she stated that I was promoting allowing a pedophile to go free. And, you know, my professionalism was questioned at that point. And I had to really, really step back and think about, you know, her perspective and what she was saying, but what I was trying to promote. So instead of engaging her, what I chose to do was um, share this with my podcast audience. And this is not my point of view. I'm going to put this out there right now for the record. I wish to make this very clear. I am an advocate through observational study on the appeal process of Robert Sylvester Kelly and how it is going down. Robert Kelly Appeal TV, or, I mean, R. Kelly Appeal TV is about supporting on the other side of the criminal justice system where individuals' rights may have been violated during a trial proceeding. This is where I'm at. So I just want to clear the air for that. And I want to give a shout out to instromusic.com for our background music. And if you do instrumentals and would like to be featured here on the channel, please uh, put it in the comment box below or email me. My information is in the description box also. All information is, you know, right there. <laughs> so... Jennifer Bonjean, the appeals attorney um, for R. Kelly, is a professional attorney with decades of experience in civil rights and criminal law, specializing in appellate post-conviction law, making her a force to be reckoned with regarding the R. Kelly appeal opportunity. While her client, Robert Sylvester Kelly, awaits federal and state trial in both Illinois and Minnesota, Bonjean is doing her research to prepare a positive outcome. The sentencing is stated to take place in late 2022 when charges from a New York court brought nine convictions against Kelly and Juan. So his appeal process should begin its briefing Immediately thereafter, the sentencing, um, Kelly faces a possible 10 years to life. And Bonjean states that R. Kelly was treated unfairly during his trial. Today, we're going to look at two pieces of those uh, two pieces of that information regarding one. We're going to share some conversations that we had regarding if there was an injustice done in the case of R. Kelly. And number two, what attorney Jennifer Bonjean must or must not do in order to have convictions overturned in a timely manner to successfully win R. Kelly's appeal upon the technicality. So let's get it. Let's get it.
What Bonjean must do in order to have convictions overturned in a timely manner to successfully win R. Kelly's appeal would be A. Bonjean and Kelly must use their energy in the strongest way. They must get, get together and they must develop a balance and an understanding with one another. If Bonjean has other arguments that R. Kelly suggests she uses, she must be mindful what is most important and pertinent to winning the case. You know, we can't go in here crying over spilled milk here. She must be mindful that what is most important is what should be considered in a briefing argument because you only have a document to argue your case at this time unless the um, trial court says that they are going to overturn the conviction or that they need to, you know, re re-look at the trial and redo the trial, okay? So it must be a concise and clear argument that Bonjean must create for Kelly. She must create a brief that will have law all over the place known as precedents. So we need to go through trial court law that has been um, either overturned or off, uh, thrown out because of a technicality that has gone before his case. And as well as that, they also must use um, information regarding the abuse of power in the situation um, relating to what I feel is, um, and what others have felt as well. Um, I'd say out of the 12 conversations, 10 of them have also agreed that a statute of limitation technicality should be brought. Okay. R. Kelly should, um, you know, because his convictions could have, you know, if he had, a, if they had have allowed other witnesses in the case, that could have changed the entirety of the convictions. Um, effectiveness is going to be the key as well in this appeal because that was something they weren't able to get right in his trial under his uh, defense attorney, Greenberg. The next effective way to have Kelly's case overturned is for Bonjean to be logical. So in writing your brief, um, a person must get right to the point and be very focused. They must be paragraphically focused. The information must be connected and in sync with what is being argued to the point. And it has to be done quick, concise, and verbatim. It has to be done as though you're writing um, sentences in the first grade. Very, very short, brief, and to the point. She must not use her voice in any way to mislead the court through emotion. Deciding what arguments are most important from the very beginning is going to be the, the foundation. Persuasion is the key to winning this appeal. Many people don't know how to persuade an argument. They don't know how to remove emotion. They don't know how to remove judgment. However, some do, and I hope she is the one that does this because that's the only way he's going to win. It is not about quantity. It is not about the amount of mistakes that the trial court made more than it is about the quality of Kelly's facts that should be heard that was not heard in trial court during the appeal. Effective counsel is what is being sought here, and that should be the very basis of the key. Number two, we're going to share some conversations regarding if there was an injustice done in the case of R. Kelly. Um, some people feel that there was that there were great deal that there were great injustices done and that the trial court overreached beyond their arm of respect performed during his trial. Bon Jean immediately made it her business to help R. Kelly when she realized that there was injustice done because her quote is injustice to one person is a misjustice to all who ever will enter this court of law. 
So it may not be R. Kelly, but it may be someone else that even, you know, we are loved ones. So let's be mindful and think beyond personal emotional judgment or personal beliefs on what is happening. Remember, we're in a very confusing time. This is during a pandemic. This is during a time where people are just running off of emotion. They're not looking at the logistics of what is going to take place when people's lives are affected by this as a precedent. Okay, because if you have a young woman you're dating or a young man you're dating, it's so easy to use and misuse and abuse personal opportunities there um, and then run to the court. And all it takes is, you know, um, you know, there's, there's, there's nothing standing in the way of justice that is going to prevent someone from sabotaging your life. If that is the case, if it's not, then yes, we're going to get some very important information that is going to balance the society. It's going to build a society to a way that, you know, all will be safe and free. So R. Kelly's charges that were brought up 15 years ago should have been charged at that particular time. That's all I'm saying. According to the justice of law, the 2008 cases that were thrown out were again charged in 2021. Robert Kelly was acquitted of all of those charges in 2008. They decided to bring these same charges that surpassed the statute of limitations they also charged them under a man act that allowed them to put R. Kelly's life on trial for everything he's done since the day of his birth. And that's the fear that we should be looking at if it wasn't R. Kelly in the place, but someone who we are, who we are fighting for. Okay. That's all I'm saying is to be mindful, um, that that law is so unreal. The fight was unfair and the court used the process unlawfully, period. The government used the opportunity to win in an unlawful way. And Bonjean states, you should not be able to cheat, then declare victory. So that's our episode seven. And I feel that in this episode, we are looking at technicalities from a position of the court appeal, not just because R. Kelly is who he is, but because the state and the federal government cannot overstep boundaries that are unlawful. We already have enough. We have enough in our world to have to deal with driving while black, Driving while gendered, you know, black lives matter, white lives matter, green lives matter. Everybody's life matters. And if we're not careful, we're going to forget that. I mean, I sit back and I really feel for the woman who judged me for having a point of view that is from a criminal justice position. And judging me on her emotion. Well, that has nothing to do with me. I can't worry about her. I could only say, and I only bring that up to let people know that if you have something you are fighting for, whether it is not popular, whether it is the most popular thing, find something to stand for and find something to empower your community with. Because if you don't, Injustice will prevail in every aspect of our lives. And not just injustice from a victim's point of view, but injustice from a point of view where some people are not considered victims. They are actually perpetrating the um, consent and then backing away from that when time changes. When perceptions change, when we realize, oh, we weren't supposed to do that. That was immoral. 
And so my point is to be mindful. Let us all be mindful of this because, you know, R. Kelly, (laughs) I feel for him because I know he's like with, with child support even. I mean, at what point does the child support laws need people to assist in that measure? Because you even have people where... Why should you have to live off of millions of dollars when you can't work? How do you do that? How do you become incarcerated and you can't even get a payment plan? How do you become incarcerated unless, of course, it is just things piled against you? And it all happens one, two, three, four. It happened too perfect. It was like it was a movie that was just being projected. So these are just my point of view and things that I've communicated with people. I actually had 12 conversations this week. It was very powerful. It was very wonderful. And people are really sharing their points of what they feel about this. And they're they're comparing it to their own personal experience with how you know when you're first charged with you know a crime or whatever and they got to work and sort things out through that process that initial process that booking process um, police officers can lie and they can add things to it just based on what you, you're saying on the way to the to the precinct or you know and it's just really weird or how all those things can be conjoined in something um, that's why it says you know say nothing on the ride there say nothing because everything you say can and will be used against you in the court of law because that's just how it is and ignorance is not a defense that's another and final thing I want to say in the criminal justice system you know I have a bachelor's and a master's in criminal justice and one thing that is very pertinent in the criminal justice system is ignorance is not a defense. So say you didn't know, just because you didn't know does not make it official that, oh, well, we're going to allow ignorance to be a part of the scenario. Because if they do that, people can always admit that they didn't know. So that right there is not a defense in a court of law. Um... And that's something that I want you to take with you this week. And I thank you so much for joining me. Let's get this, you know, let's do this thing and um, make it happen. Make it happen for yourself to just, you know, do your research. Don't worry about what NBC or ABC or CNN or any of the, or even R. Kelly TV, you know, don't let someone make the decisions for you you make them for yourself because you're the only one who has to live with what your beliefs are i thank you so much for joining liking subscribing this this podcast and if you know anyone who would like to be on the podcast and share their points of view a lot of people are still backing away from that um we still will embrace that you know even if we have to speak what you want to say. We'll do that. Thank you so much. And we'll see you next Sunday, 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And always keep it 100. Against the, the, um, the defendant.